Welcome everybody to Wix Design Her. We are so glad to have you here. If you are a female entrepreneur and you are looking to raise the bar on your website, then you have come to the right place. So please click subscribe below. We would love to have you join us and be kept up to date with all of the information that we are giving you on this YouTube series show. So welcome. And today we have a special guest that I want to introduce you to. Her name is Lynn Tickner Swords, and she has a company called Ink and Key. And what her company does is she helps businesses name their business. So you may not be wondering if there's a whole science to this, but I think there is. And Lynn is going to share some of her secrets with us. So if you've ever struggled with what should I name my business, we have the expert to help you. So welcome, Lynn, to Wix Design Her. We're happy to have you here. So let's just dive right in. First of all, um, tell us a little bit about who you are and um, what is Ink and Key? How long have you been doing this? How did it get started? Give us some of your backstory for us. Okay. Um, yeah, great to be here, Ruthann. Um, yeah, Ink and Key uh, just celebrated um, its second birthday at the end of June. So we're two years old. So I'm pretty happy about where we are for being such a baby company. Um, I started uh, Ink and Key initially just as a website for my freelance writing. That was kind of my idea when I came up with the name Ink and Key because I was thinking of um, the ink on the typewriter and the key. And when they make that connection, you get writing and all the communication you can do through that. So that's sort of where I got the name for my company, but it grew pretty quickly. And um, so the main thing we do on Ink and Key is we help uh, startups and um, businesses that might be rebranding uh, to come up with names for their businesses. And usually the people that come to us are frustrated or they've been struggling with this for a while and they just, ready to get some help. Right, so. right. And that's a good place for us to start. So if I'm a startup and I'm trying to figure out what to name my business, where do I even start? What, what am I supposed to be thinking about? What questions should I be asking? Tell me what the secret sauce is to figuring out the name for my company. Okay. Um, secret sauce, I'm not sure because really everybody that comes to us is a uh, because everyone has their own story, they have their own ideas. Um, so every business and company that comes to us is uh, really different. Um, but I do see similar issues that come up over and over and over again with clients. And um, I think the one thing that can help people coming in to trying to name their business, whether they're using us or another company for help, or if they're just doing it themselves, um, is to get your expectations right. Because um, most people have way too many expectations for just one little name. They expect that name to do everything, to do all the things that really their marketing is supposed to do for them, you know, and so they'll come to us and say, um, you know, we want our name to be six letters or less. We want an exact match.com. We want this to describe everything that we're doing, our philosophy. We want it to promote uh, integrity and the list will go on and on and it's just that's just not realistic um and so um that's the main thing and so the way to kind of move out of that mindset i think um of having too many expectations is to think really hard about what you want your name's job description to be um and it needs to be pretty much just one thing what job are you going to give your name and then see if you can get your job to do that so something realistic would be um give a hint as to what you do uh, to create curiosity um, about your name. So people will be engaged um, or to make somebody laugh. Again, the purpose is engagement because we are in a space, you know, on the internet just filled and filled and filled with business names. And so it's just very, very crowded. And so to me, I think the, the smartest way to go about naming is to think, what can I name my business that will engage customers that will cause them to, take a second look. If they're looking at a shelf, um, you know, full of products and this person is trying to name a product, how can you name your product so that it stands out from the competition? Mm, um, yeah. So it's, it's all about, I think, um, coming up with some really objective criteria. That's very helpful. So if you know what you're looking for, you're more likely to find it. 
Yeah. Now, um, is there a difference between trying to come up with a, a very creative name um, as opposed to maybe using your own name? I know a lot of times people use their own name for their company. Are there pros and cons to either one of those scenarios? Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, one thing about, and, and there's nothing, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with naming, um, a business after your own name. Um, one of the ways to look at that though is, uh, unless you're somebody famous, nobody really cares who you are. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, they don't, they don't know you. They don't know your name. Um, you know, if it's Frankel and Sons plumbing or whatever, people don't really know who Frankel is and they don't really care. It's not necessarily going to grab people's attention. Um, but all that to say to you, a name like that for a service company can work really well. So it just, it's going to depend, but that's just one way to think about it. If your goal is engagement, naming your business after yourself might not necessarily be super engaging. And then this would also move into, well, who's your target audience? It might be, but you have to think about who are you trying to reach? Right. Um, right. So yeah. the, the people I'm thinking about right now, um, ones that I notice use their names a lot would be coaches, like a business coach or a personal coach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is talk a little bit about that. Is that something mm -hmm. that um, would be beneficial to them because they're trying to promote themselves or should they try and come up with something that describes a little bit more about what they do? Um, well, I mean, I won't necessarily say or advise don't use your own name if you are a business coach. But I would say that a business coach shouldn't really be trying to promote themselves. They should be trying to promote the solution they offer for their clients' issues, you know, and positioning themselves as helper, as someone who is going to come alongside you. You know, if I'm the business coach, then I want to find out what are your pain points, what are your big issues, and then um, how can I come alongside you and be your support and helper and get you to um, to where you want to go. So right. I'm, if I'm, if it's all about me, then I'm positioning myself as a hero. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't want to do that as the business owner. I want my client to be the hero and I just want to come alongside and partner with them and help them get to their goals. So sure. that may be a little bit of a tangent, but that's something that I do talk to people about, mm -hmm. um, from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. So, very good. Uh, um, yeah. Are there any kind of questions that people should ask themselves as they're just getting started, as they're starting out? Um, you know, what, what should they be asking themselves when it comes to naming their company? Um, I think, I mean, it, it comes back to what do I want my name to do? And then you also need to think about your target audience. Uh, you need to think about um, does this name need to be uh, understood and spelled correctly over the phone. That's really important if you have a name that has all kinds of funky spellings, but you spend your time marketing that name um, over the phone, then you're going to run into difficulty. Um, and so uh, you need to think about how this name is going to be presented in the real world, um, too. And just so, and the thing is, is a lot of people approach naming um, just all by itself and they think, you know, so they look at names, they look at, you know, names we present to them or names they're coming up with themselves, but they're just seeing a word on a paper. But in real life, that's not how, uh, that's not how we see, you know, as consumers, we don't see names like on a white piece of paper on a blank wall in silence. You know, we see brands, which a brand is totally different than a name, you know, and so we'll see logos and brand colors and beautiful websites and we'll see social media posts and we'll see, you know, landing pages and uh, we might be engaged in conversation with someone when the brand comes up. So um, if you think about, I guess uh, I would say to business owners, you know, doing all this preliminary thinking about naming is you need to sort of think about your marketing strategy and how is my name going to fit into that? Think about how your name will be presented in the real world. And that can help in so many areas, I think, to have that thinking in mind because then you understand that uh, your name isn't as huge of a deal as you thought it was, like, because people get so stressed out about it. And uh, it's, it doesn't have to do as much as you think it does. So that brings up a good point. So how important is it when we're considering what we're naming our company? You know, in the big scheme of things, how important is it really? Yeah. 
Well, um, and I heard someone else say this on a podcast, so this is not my original thinking, but it really rang true with me because I've said basically the same thing over and over again to clients is that, you know, just trying to reassure them, um, especially if they're trying to make a final decision, um, that just that no one is ever going to think as hard about your name right now as you are. Your customers don't really care that much about what your name is. They care more about um, how quickly you are to respond to them when they call you or when they email you. They care about integrity. They care about your um, products that you're presenting to them or your services. Um, and so, you know, as long as the name you choose um, can fall in line with your marketing strategy, you're going to be fine. I mean, you know, there are exceptions. Um, obviously, if it's named you know, it starts with X and there's no vowels and it's, you know, you can definitely have really bad names. If you just Google it, you'll find uh, a lot of funny articles, you know, with super bad names. So there are definitely things to avoid, but, um, you know, most business owners just get way too stressed. Yeah. Um, so we spend so. way too my, we, we overthink it is what we do. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. So don't overthink it. Yeah. I Approach agree. it with a much more relaxed, and yes. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, I mean, because you, you just want to engage people. That's, that's really the main job of your name. However, the name decide, you know, does it, you want to engage people with your name and then you want to draw them into who you are as a brand. Right. Um, right. So it's just the, the way to open the door to everything else. So I like what you said. It's not the name itself, but it's what is behind the name. So how you're treating your people, right. how you're treating your customers, are you trustworthy? Yeah. You know, because that's what's going to help build up that name. The reputation that goes with the name is what's important. Right. Right. Because like if you think about, you know, any of the big brand names that we know, um, like if you think about Nike, what does that, what does Nike mean? It means just do it. It means all these things that we have associated with Nike when that's not really what the word necessarily means. And it's just because of their marketing and the the longevity of the brand so far and how it's grown, it's kind of morphed into a meaning. And so, you know, we're not, most of us are not ever going to be that big as a brand, but we can still grow in um, what our name comes to represent over time. Um, so I think to just encourage business owners, you know, that your name is going to morph over time into who you are as a brand. And when you're just starting out, you even have a brand. And so it's overwhelming because you don't really, you don't have your website built yet even, you know, so there's a lot of uh, steps to go through for businesses. So that's again, why I think it's overwhelming. Um, yeah. But, you know, but you bring up a good point because um, your name isn't necessarily your branding. They're two separate things. And I like what you right. started with talking about how um, your name can't do everything, but your marketing is supposed to do all of that. So really right. that should take the pressure off of having to find just the right name and allow yes. your marketing and your branding to do all the other work. Right. Yeah. So is it yeah. better to come up with a simple name then, you know, I mean, people are so rushed and we're so crazed and there's so much out there. We're bombarded with information all the time. Is a simple name the way to go? Well, it can be. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of um, metaphorical names, names that kind of represent an idea. Um, but like my name is made up of three, three letter words put together, words that you already know how to spell, you know, um, and words that are easy to pronounce. And so um, it doesn't uh, cause me any issues over the phone. And uh, most of the times if I just tell somebody in person, they can go and find my website by looking me up. Um, and so that's, I personally, I'm a fan of using real words spelled correctly. Um, but that's not to say that you can't go off a little bit and um, take a common word and switch out a letter here and there. Um, and a lot of times people will do that um, because they're trying to secure a domain. Um, and, you know, that can be another huge pitfall is kind of having a domain led naming project versus an idea led. Um, I would always advise people to first get your idea and then we can find you a domain, you know, that goes right. along with it because you tack on something at the beginning or the end um, and it'll be okay because, uh, and dot coms versus other extensions, that's another issue. Um, right, yeah. Um, but 
it's like the exact match.com is not as important as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, people did used to type in um, a URL, but people don't really type URLs in very often anymore. They're going to be searching for something right. and they're going to find it. They're going to click and that's the majority. Uh, that's the way the majority of people are, are landing on pages is, you know, and so um, it shouldn't be as stressful to people anymore okay. um, to find exactmatch.com because those are very hard to find or super expensive. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, because people are searching for things. They're not necessarily typing direct names in. That's, right. that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So if a business owner is really struggling in trying to find their name and they want to get a hold of you, tell us how someone can reach you. Yeah, well, they can go to inkandkey.com, and uh, there's a contact form. Um, that's really the best way to get a hold of me is through that. I'll respond to you pretty quickly. Um, that's one of my things I love to do in my business is respond to people quickly, and I have so many people say, oh, my gosh, thank you for the quick response, and, and that, that's just normal for me, I guess, because I work all the time, but um, <laughs> and at my computer, but, uh, but yeah, fill out that contact form or at the top of my site, if you go to it, um, there's a big yellow button that says get a name now and you can get started just by filling out a questionnaire and making a payment. But um, I'm happy to schedule calls with people. There's a button on my site for that too. Awesome. Um, if people have a conversation with me and talk about it. So yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on Wix Design Her. I really appreciate you sharing your information and your naming secrets with us. Um, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, for those of you who are visiting with us either for the first time or you're uh, visiting with us again, thank you for being here on Wix Design Her. And again, if you are looking for tips and tricks and you're a female entrepreneur, please hit subscribe click the button subscribe to Wix Design Her. We would love to have you join us again. And we promise to continue to bring you information that will help you raise the bar when it comes to your website. And RAISE stands for resources, advice, inspiration, support, and encouragement. So Lynn, thank you for doing all of that for us when it comes to naming our businesses. I appreciate you having on the show.